I'm not a real hardcore player. Let me explain. You see, every hardcore YouTuber seems to have hundreds or even thousands of XP levels, and I have just 69, which is not a very impressive number for a hardcore world I've been working on for six months. So today we are going to build the perfect XP farm to help me catch up with everybody else. Now here's how this is going to work. Our first order of business will be to get a super smelter. We are once again going to need a few hundred thousand blocks of stained glass, and I'm not mining that by hand again. And after we are done with the super smelter, we are going to repair the sand duper I made in episode 2. As I said repair because I broke it, and I'll explain that later. Then we are going to whip up a cactus farm for the green dye we will need, and then we'll do some mining to get the remainder of the needed blocks. I really need to start doing smaller projects, good god. But anyways, let's get this dirt down. a completely unnecessary thing to do, but I like having flat area to work on, so I did it anyways. I also need to light up these walls real quick. Now we need to just take out a few of these dogs that are crawling on the walls and get our items crafted up. That should be everything, so let's get this super smelter built. fiasco out of the way, we need to go repair the sand duper. Now, if you've been here a while, you'll remember I built this thing back in episode two. And if you know how sand dupers work, you'll know that they use a chunk loader in order to operate. Well, basically, back between episode three and four, I made the mistake of not only leaving the chunk loader on, but I also left the machine itself running. And when I went into the end, I was met with millions of blocks of sand all over the place and a whole lot of lag. Needless to say, the game crashed and and the state of the world became so unstable that I almost lost it to a corrupted file again. Fortunately, I made a backup and intentionally hurried up and broke the duper to save the world from being corrupted by blocks. But I learned a valuable lesson. Don't be stupid. So let's do the smart thing and repair the machine so we aren't spending another 10 hours shoveling sand. <laughs> Super Smelter is built and Sand Duper is fixed, so now we take this sand and see just how quickly we can get glass smelted. Why does every episode I make include so much sand? Maybe I need to make a glass factory? That would be pretty cool actually. Episode 6, anyone? Now as I mentioned before, sand isn't the only thing that's going to need smelted today. I need lots of green dye. And I originally thought that I would be able to just grab a bunch of cactus by hand, but then I realized I was going to need more than 200 chests full of dye. So cactus farm it is. And I actually decided to live stream a good portion of this build, so make sure you tune into my streams to get early access to hardcore content. I go live most Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5pm Eastern Standard time. And speaking of early access, I also launched a Patreon this week, and there you can get behind the scenes Minecraft hardcore vlogs, which are pretty cool. Oh, and if you want the schematics for all my major builds, including the ones in this episode, they can be found on my Patreon as well. It's only a couple bucks, and it really helps out the channel a lot. So quick shout out to all my current channel members and Patreons. Your support does not go unnoticed. Anyways, green bean time.
yeah, this is a lot better. So much easier. Not only did we collect a good amount of cactus, but we also seem to have picked up a respectable amount of dogs along the way. I also grabbed some yellow dye from some sun... From some sun? From some sun? From some sunflowers. From some sunflowers. Yeah, say that 10 times real fast. Anyways, we didn't need a lot of this. We need just about 5,000 pieces of yellow stained glass, which isn't a lot. Well, I mean, that is a lot, but compared to the build we're making and the 104,000 blocks of lime green glass we need, that's not much at all. But now that some of the more tedious stuff is done, we can move on to something I've really been looking forward to. Now, back in the last episode, we made this set of netherite armor that lets us insta-mine blocks we normally wouldn't be able to. And that's thanks to a mod called Better Armor Trims. So we are headed down to Bedrock to insta-mine some deep slate for the exterior of the build. I am very excited about this. <laughs> I mean, that was just chef's kiss, man. Oh my god. Thank you, iron-trimmed netherite armor. And to address some of the comments I've been getting about this... Oh, you call yourself a hardcore YouTuber? You use mods. Get off your high horse. You're not him. You're cheating and making the game easier with mods. To that I say, I, I know, right? How dare I play this open-world sandbox game the way I enjoy playing it? It's so wrong that I went against the imaginary set of rules that some completely random person on the internet have set for themselves in their own heads and expect me to follow because god forbid anybody should have fun in a children's block game. I should just ignore the hundreds of hours of building and scripting and editing and creating and delete the whole world because my series is tainted by the egregious presence of uniqueness and individuality. I can instamine stone without a beacon. Stay mad. Had to get that one off my chest. Anyway, we should have all the deep slate we'll need so now all that's left to do is afk by the cobblestone generator for a while to get the final blocks we need i want to build a giant obelisk of some kind and i want there to be a gradient going from stone to deep slate i think that would be pretty cool like a gray to black pattern and you guys will see what all the glass is for in the time lapse so don't worry your square little heads all will be revealed in time. Oh, shoot. I'm also going to need to grab some sea lanterns from the guardian farm. I completely forgot about that. Now, I, I, I've been using sea lanterns a lot more frequently, and I have to say, this farm needs fixed ASAP. I face death every single time I come here, but nah, we aren't fixing that today. I have more important things to do, like building a completely over-the-top and unnecessary megastructure to house what is ultimately just going to be a regular Enderman farm. I haven't slept in a week. All right, and everything in these chests needs to get into the end, which means I am going to have to make more than a few trips. Let's be very careful building out like this and making a platform that probably looks like heaven to all the endermen that can't spawn anywhere because i deleted their home dear god the end never gets any less terrifying the void is the one thing all hardcore players fear and for good reason there is no coming back from literal nothingness good thing i have my star whales to keep me company they can watch from a distance while we build this mega structure <laughs>
just looks sick. I don't even care that there's a lot of unutilized space. It looks insane. Now we do need to slab off a good portion of this build because the Endermen are wanting to spawn on the outside and not at the actual killing chamber. And we need to make it darker in here as well. Okay, that should be good for now. The rates still aren't perfect because I haven't slabbed off the outside entirely. I also have to add some additional light sources outside. Now we just got to remove our walkway and get a good look at this thing with shaders. Oh my god. This is this is why I'm the best. Is there any debating it at this point? No, I'm, I'm kidding, but... I really do think this looks gorgeous. I wanted to make it look like there was a bunch of experience particles falling out of the bottom of the structure, you know, because it is an XP farm. And I, I think I nailed that look pretty well. I'm very happy with this. And I know the interior is not done, but I'm saving that for another episode. And you guys will see why when that episode airs, but to be honest, that's probably not going to happen for a few more months. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching yet another episode of Hardcore Minecraft. The series is going really well, and I'm having a lot of fun, and we are approaching 40,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So I want to thank you all so much for coming along with me on this journey, and as always, I hope you all have a great day, but I'm going to have to head out because I got more work to do.